To start off, I just have a simple polysphere loaded in ZBrush here. And we're first going to talk about using Image Plane to load in reference inside of ZBrush. Image Plane is located underneath the texture palette, so I'm going to come up here and click on Texture, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see the words Image Plane. If you click on that, it'll open actually open up the Image Plane palette. In here you have a button for Load Image, you have a slider for Image Size, and then you have a sub palette of reference views. And in here you have the front, back, right, left, top, bottom, and two custom views. These are going to be used to actually store our different views inside of ZBrush as we're using the Image Plane functionality. Now to set up image plane, it's pretty simple. First thing we do, we need to make sure that our model is in the front view. So we're going to come over here and just click on front, and you should see your model update to kind of make sure it's positioned correctly inside the canvas. Next thing we need to do is load in an image. So we're going to come over here to load image and just click on that. And then we need to navigate to our reference folder where our images we want to load in uh, are living. Now, right now, by default, ZBrush is going to look for Photoshop PSDs. So the images I have for reference are actually in JPEG format. So I need to come down here and click on Photoshop PSD and then select JPEG. And now my reference images should load up. Now, here I have some reference images that uh, one of my friends, a uh, concept artist by the name of Tony Leonard, uh, has created. So I'm just going to double click one of these. And right as you double click it, you'll see that it'll actually load it in and fill up your canvas space with that image. And you'll have your model in front of it. So right now that image loaded in pretty large. So I need to kind of shrink that down a little bit. I have a lot of clipping on the top here for the top of this helmet. So I'm going to go back to texture. I'm going to come down here to this image size slider. And I'm going to type in 80 and then hit enter. And then I'm going to come back up, and since I already loaded this image through Image Plane, I can just come up here and select it to make it the active one, and then come back here and just hit Load Image. Now when I click this button, it's going to take into account of this 80 image size. So it's going to bring in the image at 80% of its size, which should be enough to uh, allow me to see the whole image inside the canvas here. So I'm just going to click that. And there you go, you can see it's taken it and scaled it proportionally uh, by 80%. Now you may notice too that uh, the image here might be a little bit granular or grainy and this is because the image was pretty big and it's getting scaled down inside of ZBrush. Well if we go back up to texture here and select our image again there is a button here it's called uh, anti-alias texture and so if you click that it will kind of apply an anti-alias effect to your texture and then when you come back down and now click load image that image will come in with anti-aliasing on so it will be a little bit uh, crisper in some areas. It won't have any of that weird kind of shading effects. So if you run in using, you know, very large image inside of image plane and they're kind of getting some degrading values on it, just come up the texture after you have it loaded, turn on that anti-aliasing and then reload it back in and it should look uh, pretty good. So after you have this front view kind of set right here with our model, we just need to position this sphere here so it matches roughly the center position of our front view. So I'm just going to hold Alt and move that sphere roughly into the position over here. Now I'm not going to scale this sphere right now because right now this sphere, the size of it, has been determined by me coming up and clicking this front view under reference. So right now it's a global kind of scale which is what we want. So we're going to keep this now and then we can scale it down later if needed. Um, after you have it positioned where you want it, you need to go back to this texture tab and go back to the image plane palette and then come down here and click store view. And this is going to actually take the position of this model in relation to our image plane and store it. So now we have the front view done. We're going to go back up to texture and we're going to come over here and we're going to click left to get our left view established. So right now the sphere just came in and you can see we have no image plane loaded. So you actually have to load an image plane in for every single view. So we're going to come back up, since we're already going to use the same image, just going to make sure that's active, and make sure I'm in left, which I am, and then 80% is still set, and we're just going to hit load image. And that should now bring this as the left view into our scene. So now I can make this sphere, and once again, uh, not scaling it, just moving it, I'm just going to hold alt, and move it to the rough position of that helmet. And then I'm going to come back up to that texture tab one more time, and just hit store view. So now I have a front view stored and a left view stored in relation to our image plane. Now you may notice that I keep coming back up here to this texture tab quite a bit. 
Well, you don't always have to come up here to use this. You can actually, if you come to any menu inside a ZBrush that you end up referencing a lot, you can actually dock these onto this side or this side of your screen. So I'm actually going to dock this whole texture palette over here to the left side. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click where it says Divider, and that's going to open up this left side uh, area over here. Then I'm going to go back up to the texture palette, and I'm going to grab it with this little icon right here. So you just want to hover over that icon, press down with your mouse, and it'll actually grab that thing there. And then you can just slide that palette right over there. So now you have a duplicate location of this texture palette. So here, this is going to stay open so I can sculpt and then come back, and I don't have to come back up to this texture palette all the time. Now, if this starts getting you know, in your way while you're doing your sculpting, you just come back over here and you can click this divider line, and it's going to hide that right there. Now, also of note is that it did not remove the location of the original texture palette. So if you still need to locate the texture palette, it's still living right here. It just made a duplication of it so that actually you can just open it up and have it on screen all the time while you work. So now that we have this up all the time, I can quickly come over here and click these buttons and get to my views of that model very quick. So I'm going to switch to left and switch to front. Now right now this sphere here, you know, it's covering up my concept, so I'm not really seeing my concept through it. Image Plane has a function which will allow you to change the model opacity. So if you come over here back to Image Plane, there's a model opacity slider, and you can just change this and you'll see that the model will actually become transparent and allow you to see your reference and image behind it. So you can just quickly come through and scrub and change your opacity and then go back into ZBrush and then just use you know a simple move brush and actually start tailoring your concept to kind of fit that uh, object there. Now as you're doing this sometimes it helps to uh, have a matte cap that reads a little bit better and doesn't have a lot of shading in it. So right now by default I'm on matte cap gray so I'm getting you know some dark shadowing down here. So if you come over here and just click this matte cap material, um, one that works really well is the skin shade 4. And if you click that now you're going to be able to see some more of that kind of area around your model. So it's just going to give you a little bit of a brighter kind of diffuse look to the surface of that sphere so you can actually make it match your concept a little bit better. Now you may also notice if you move the object into the concept, so something like that, so grabbing the border of the model and moving it in, you'll start getting areas on your image plane here that look like they're disappearing. Um, if, to get rid of this, just come over and just click off the model and then it'll actually update that image plane one more time. So it's just a little kind of thing there. So if you start getting you know these kind of areas of your image plane where you can't see everything, just click off and it'll update. So a good practice is just to, you know, sculpt, remove, and then just click off if you're using Image Plane, and it'll update that object right there. Now another really cool thing about Image Plane is, is when you start moving stuff around like this, you may accidentally, you know, rotate your model off into a different angle like this. Well, this is fine. Um, to get it back, just come back over to your Image Plane slider here, and then just double-click the view you want. So if I want to get back to the front view, just click it and you're going to get back to that front view. So it's really free form and kind of non-destructive way to kind of come in and manipulate an object with your reference behind it. And then if you know move your object by accident or you like scale it, um, you just come back here and click this and it's going to reset back to exactly where it was. So you just quickly set your front view like this and then go to the left side and then do the same thing where you just start tailoring you know your geometry to kind of match the structure of your concept. So a really quick way to work um, inside of ZBrush to get that form. Now once you read a certain point where you know your concepts you know pretty much matching your object you may want to you know hide image plane and uh, you know just do some traditional sculpting. Well that's very easy as well we just need to clear our canvas. So if you hit control and N on your keyboard it's actually going to remove image plane and just give your model just in its own space how it was you know originally when we started um, before we even loaded image plane. Now you may notice that your model right now, I have full white applied to this model, yet it's still looking pretty gray. And this has become this model opacity is set to 30. So if you ever find your models being darker than what you think they should be, uh, check image plane and make sure your model opacity is at 100%. And now you should be getting that nice you know, coloring effect um, on your model. So just make sure you always check that if your model is looking a little bit funny um, value wise. You may need to actually just come in and see if image plane has the model opacity turned on.
So now you can come in and just, you know, kind of sculpt this form out a little more. And then if you want to go back and actually check it with your image planes, you just simply come back over here and click one of these views. It's going to load that image plane right back up and it's going to position that model exactly where it was. So very quick workflow of, you know, modeling out your stuff very fast and then checking it with an actual image. Now another awesome thing with image plane is that it actually saves with a project file. So if you have all these views loaded up for your model and you're actually sculpting around it, um, you can actually come up here to file save as and it will save all these image planes. So then to load just open ZBrush again, go file open, load that project file and then if you come back to the texture tab and go to image plane, all these stored views will still be there. So that's one way to load reference images inside of ZBrush to help your uh, you know, workflow go a little bit faster.